Veen and Megan had requested and we discussed with Megan uh, updating us on what's going on in the IRVM program so take it away Megan. So I'll kind of go It'll be like a meld of August and September. Okay. Um, so I did have the seasonals up until the third week of August. Um, Nate left just before the 4th of July, so that first week. Um, so it was just the three of us. We did, mm -hmm. there was a bridge project that was done. So we laid the erosion map for that um, bridge project and then we seeded it um, before the hydro seeder basically got condemned. Um, we did, we planted um, about four and a half acres worth of seed. Some of that was redone where we had seeded it and then like a week later we had all the downpours and then it just washed everything away because there was so much rain. So some of that was reseeding. Uh, we sprayed all of the county yards um, per request from some of the secondary road staff. So. We did that and then shortly after we had three weeks of rain so then it was kind of the roadside stuff was kind of put on the side we didn't get our sprayer back until the end of july and then um, when it was at sprayer specialties they never winterized it so when we started it up each part they replaced broke individually so <laughs> we didn't really get out until kind of very late July, August, and then I do have the map of where we spray weeds if you guys would like to see it. Um, we, we basically got a quarter of the county with some hard surface roads, and then the sprayer head, um, it didn't go up and down anymore, it only did a swath across, so we hand gunned everything. So it did take a lot longer to get that done, because when you're out there actually walking the ditch, it takes longer than just driving with a swath. Um, we did brush spraying. Um, we didn't actually, what I'd like to do is a township um, each time, but this time we had so many complaints for brush that we just sprayed the brush complaints and then I had emailed you guys and we were having issues with the handgun. It then exploded and covered one of the employees with herbicide and it was going to cost too much to fix so that just kind of got kaput. Um, that and then the two pole behind sprayers, the straw thrower that we haven't used since 1990, that I took to the DOT auction. So that's going to be up for bid. I think they said it was the 20th of October is when it goes up. And then I believe that money goes back to the general fund, if I remember correctly. Yes. Um, they did say two or three of the pieces of equipment that we took down might bring in 10,000 or more. So the money for the county. Uh, what they do? What they do with the old hydro seeder? The old hydro seeder? Uh, it's still there. They said usually like a landscaper would be. Are we talking the pole behind, right? The old one, yeah. Yeah. So they said typically a landscaper would take that one, but there is, and you buy it as is from the DOT. There is about four thousand dollars worth of work that needs to be done to it for it to be functional. So whoever buys it. It's theirs. Um, that is part of an LRTF grant. So I talked to him <coughs> who's in charge of that. And he, I sent him all the paperwork I had on it. They put in 80%. So when we get the itemized deduction, the county has to pay back the LRTF 80% of what it's sold for. And then the same thing with the straw thrower. So whatever it sells for, they get 80% and we keep the rest. The other stuff that's there was the counties. So it's just, they're not really, we don't practice that type of thing in the roadside anymore with the pole lines because now you need to be harnessed in and all of that. We don't have any of that. We, we don't have any attachments for the truck. So those are going down there. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I went to the roadside conference Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of last week. There was a professor there from U, uh, University of Iowa who does research on how much sediment is coming off of fields and ending up in the roadside and how much is actual dirt that's from the roadside. So I contacted with him and he's going to do some research plots in Hardin County. Probably won't be till their next year go around, but I'll keep you guys posted on that information. And then is there a cost to that or do no, they just, nope, it's that's just, just basically okay. it's us giving them access to use our like you 
use our roadsides for their studies. And I think he said they're maybe here for like a month because they'll set up tubes and whatever, and then they leave it, and then they just come back and check. So it's not like they're not you know really digging any. How did they decide where to do this? Uh, okay. They, I don't know. <laughs> just kind of randomly. They, he said that this would be a good county to do it because they're trying to do central. So. He was all for it, um, so I emailed him about it on Monday. So we'll see what he comes back with. And okay. if you guys want to meet him, you can. His talk was actually really interesting, and so okay. if you want to meet with him, I can try and arrange that. You can just email me and let me know. And there, with part of the DOT, um, I talked to Wes about this because this county has an IRBM department. Truax drills that we get for native seed mixes, the DOT will give IRVM one for free. So it's like we pay a hundred dollars, but then they give us a hundred dollar grant, so it cancels out. And I did talk to Wes. I know he he leases the drills out for work um, for people that are plant natives. The NRCS is promoting buffer strips. So Wes and I, I'm going to get this other seeder, and then Wes and I are going to maybe work together and do like a, this is how you use these drills and then see, lease them out to people so we're going to bring money into the county. Uh, Luke and I did a contract spray for Pine Lake. So we, the when you go around the little S curve by the mm -hmm. lower Pine Lake, we sprayed all the brush on that lower section and then one of the sections behind. and. Basically, they're going to pay for the herbicide, so we paid for it, they'll reimburse us. So we're making $100.92 from them, so that'll be money into the county. And that was my wage, Luke's wage, and then fuel and equipment. Use. So we just did our, our hourly, we were there for two hours. Um, so it was $30.90 on Luke's wage and $40.00 <coughs> and then $30.00 for fuel and equipment. So who pays that then? The DNR? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, no one over there is certified to spray herbicide, and because we have the commercial or commercial license for okay. herbicide, they, people can call us if they want. Okay. It kind of goes off of what the lead commissioners do. It's not like we're taking jobs away from people. Um, they contacted me for it, and I okay. talked with Judy and talked with Idol, so that's all squared okay. away. Okay. The other thing we did was that cell tower, I know that wasn't on the recording, but I think Lance and Renee were there. The cell tower that's by my shop, the guy that lives in one of the houses there complained about how tall the vegetation was. So looking at all the contracts, it's Verizon has the cell tower, so they maintain the tower and what's in it, and the county maintains the outside. It's kind of what it looks like. So I mowed that because of the complaints, but I don't actually have like a mower mower. I just have like, it's a rough, you know, you just drive over it a few times and it cuts what it cuts and that's it. But in order to do that, I did have to pay almost $900 to fix the mower partially. So the, one of the wheel axles was broken on it and to fix that is actually more than the cost of the mower. <laughs> so. I decided not to fix that because I didn't know who actually, because I'm not ground maintenance, so I didn't actually know who was supposed to do that, but I just did it to keep that person from you know. getting angry. So I don't know if you want me to keep doing that and get the mower fixed or buy another one or where does it go? I don't know what you want me to do with that. So that's kind of all in your court. And then today um or brad block from diamond mowers came in yesterday we got everything set up on the forestry mower head so that's good to go there was another piece he didn't see before that was broken on a hydraulic line so one of our mower heads works the other doesn't so the one for brush is attached and then when we went to go test it it was vibrating and when we looked at the teeth from when the live brush is cut, it actually wears on the equipment, so most of the teeth are dulled down, so now I have to buy new teeth. So we basically can't mow or go over any brush that's over like three or four inches in diameter. Otherwise, it's not gonna, it'll just shred and all over it. So those, we're gonna take those off today, or Luke's in the process of taking those off today, and then we're gonna reorder those teeth. So that's kind of update of last month, and then 
up to currently. Today I did order our new spray truck. So that will be built in July, or no, sorry, June. Big save my months. It'll be built in January. We will hopefully get it by the end of January and then it'll go to the trucking equipment Inc. in Des Moines and that'll get the flatbed put on it and then the sprayer is going to be built and then the sprayer will be put on it. Um, I do have the grants that are finally executed so I can get the equipment and pay for stuff that we got on the grants. Uh, Cody Wollers just emailed me like an hour ago that he just finished the sprayer so we need to bring the Kubota to him to have him attach it. Um, the Kubota dealership has that one in stock as of last week. So now that I have the grant executed, I'm going to go down there and we'll get that taken care of. So we're slowly getting these spray equipment in. Um, that's and that's kind of where we're at right now. And then I, is there anything else? You, and then there was I had a couple people call about confusion with the budget amendment. So I guess I just want to address that really quick. So. For the FY18, the leftover was like 124000 but I don't think you guys are taking into account there were bills that were not yet paid off of that, and so the tractor was on there. Um, there over, it was 70900 for the tractor. The bills um, that were paid off of it were $2,252.06. ,002 and then there were items that weren't on there, like the seed room that was supposed to be built it didn't get done till this year so that on that amount the lumber hasn't come off the concrete so there's still stuff I'm being built for for the seed room that should be coming off of the 124 and then the new amendment was for which obviously that can be altered that was for another spray truck so we can send two spray trucks out instead of one and I do have the amounts here and then um, the quick fill station Secondary Roads has been busy, so every time I try and see when they can help me get that put together, they're always too busy, so I'm going to have to contract that out. So that's part of the amendment as well. Um, and then I was going to add fuel costs and then another seasonal employee. So, or sorry, money to the seasonal employee budget because we went from $10 to 11 So I have to adjust for that. But can you give, oh, can you give us a... Hydro truck. Can you give us a copy of this in writing? I, well, I have all the stuff written down. Yeah. Okay. Can you just so. get that, put it on, you know, type I it up and send it? I was going to get to it at the meeting on the 29th. Okay. Or have it in before yeah. that anyway. Yeah, yeah if because there's a couple others, too, that we get in writing because I don't remember all mm. these. <laughs> yeah, and I have all the, what, what exactly do you want in writing? All of it. Yeah. All, obviously. Yeah, and just break it down by fiscal year of what you know, didn't get. So I'm giving these now from carryover bills so okay pull those yeah if you just hour. afterwards if you want to get copies yeah. of them made that'd be great yeah and then the only one I don't have um, an invoice for per se would be the hydro cedar truck um, I emailed Daryl today to make sure I had everything into him but he's probably busy too because I didn't know if he said if it fell under like the I forget what the classification name was then Vanderhags would have to give us the truck that we need but I don't know how long that's going to take. So the vendor that I'm going through said a used truck would be between seventy and 80000 So that I put in there because I didn't know what was going to happen. Right. So that's kind of in the mix. And then the last thing that I wanted to talk about was while we've been doing brush removal, I've had multiple people say they don't want the wood chips chipped into them because we've been chipping. Um, I've had multiple people complain about us just leaving stuff. So the chipper drives behind the truck and we just chip into the roadside. Well, then I had people complain that we were leaving the chips in the, in the roadside. So that kind of goes back to, do we want to maybe invest in a cheap dump truck because that, that um, chipper can hook to it and we can throw the chips into the dump truck, leave it piled somewhere and people can pick it up. <coughs> I don't Why don't they like them in the ditch? What's What's wrong with chips? I think it's per well, so it's like when you send it yeah. to a wood chipper, it basically like you like mulch. Yeah, it look like mulch. They say that it looks like an eyesore, and I've had multiple Would people they like stop while we've been chipping and say that. So I'm just like, it's better than leaving it whole in the exactly. Roadside, so, but and it will disintegrate faster. 
Well, it disintegrates faster in wood chip form, not yeah, that's what I mean. But yeah. I don't know. I just I think it's a preference. Is, so. is there Mark Spence and more, it's going to take another employee to haul the chips away. But you're already pulling the chipper, mm -hmm. so just a different vehicle pulls the chipper. So basically someone would drive the dump truck and then our work truck with all the equipment in it. And right. I don't know, it's up to you guys really what you want to do. I think we ought to address go back and address the policy that we have and right. discuss all this at that time. Right. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Th I do think there are means. I was at the DOT auction in Ames and, and automatic dump trucks went for a fairly reasonable price. So, I mean, if it's going, if that's yeah, the Yeah, but then where are we going to dump them? Well, well, what I was thinking is we have all the, so this, <laughs> so what I was thinking is on the east side of my shop, <laughs> an area that I don't know if it at one point was rocked over and then it just over the years just washed away but I could always spray that out and then pay Taylor or whatever to put rock there and we can leave it there or we can pay I don't whatever yeah. we I can think leave it by the shop or I believe we need there. to reevaluate the policy and just make it clear that we're either going to chip or we're not going to chip and that's the policy and well, I personally, since getting injured from where we cut and left stuff and then having to go spray it and then I messed up my knee, I personally would not like to leave fresh in the roadside. No. Right. And it's a pain in the butt to clean it. I, chipping might look bad for a short amount of time, but it's going to be a lot shorter than if you leave it whole. Yeah. Um, it's going to, you're going to see it for part of a, or for a season. On the other hand, but if it could be hauled away to a pile, let the public know it, they could come and get it and use it for mulch. And that's kind of what people have been saying to me is instead of it being there looking like an eyesore, they'd rather the public use it. Or I don't know if the, do the schools have wood chips on playgrounds? We could always. I, okay, nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I just don't know. I, yeah. would, I would look at that in a lot of different ways. What kind of trees are you chipping? What kind of toxins do they put off for flower beds or things like that? I know there's thorn trees out there, so I'd eliminate a school right away. We don't, well, the locust trees, those ones usually, even the spines on them, once it goes through that chipper, they're, they're pretty much emulsified. But I'm just... I'm throwing it out there to you guys yeah. because I've had people complain about leaving it and I've had people complain about chipping. So You can't win, yeah. so. No. I had a, a couple questions. You spoke about uh, working with Attorney Meyer. Um, so are we, is he, what, what is he pursuing in the chassis issue? Okay. So just really briefly so the hydro let me know. Sphere, because it sits separately on the unit, I, when I sent the mounting instructions, it had like, okay, the wheel, the back wheel axle has to be this many pounds, front has to be this many pounds. So they obviously, it's on a truck that is not, the weight is not correct because it's five pound or 50, 5,000 pounds over the legal limit on the back axle. So they know the weight when it's full. So it was basically if they didn't do the math correctly or they didn't follow it, right. then they have to give us a truck that would suit what we Because in my discussions with you and then briefly with Attorney Meyer, it, they misrepresented the chassis. Right, because they said it, it would work. Right, and we have documentation that that would work, they acknowledge. And so this wasn't a matter of, you know, ignorance or malicious intent mm -hmm. on the county's part. This is a fact that we were sold something that was misrepresented yes. and now it's not uh, safely able to be operated, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Next item I had was, is there anything we are doing to hold sprayer specialties negligent for not taking care of the equipment we entrusted them to fix? Mm -hmm. And deep, I mean, it's obviously deviated from 
typical practice of winterizing something that has water in it. So, so basically all they did was the parts that instead of having us pay for repair and labor, they because I drove it down there two times, and then the third time I was like, no, you like, you guys are coming here, you're gonna talk to the county attorney. They sent someone up and they actually re replaced everything, and then they didn't charge us anything. So okay, that was so that like has been remedied. Way. Yeah, that was like their okay. way of um, apologizing for not. Okay, that's all I had. Thank you, Megan. Do you have anything else? Uh, I think, unless you guys have other questions about with those pull behind sprayers do they have a cage around them no no cage so you would have to put the safety harness on how you say it can't be put on or it's expensive to be well, to put so on so the way that, that those sprayers are is you stand in the bed of a truck and you hold a hose and you spray as someone drives they don't have the part on the back where they ride on the back no so and i don't I don't know if they were, well, and I think the counties had those for. We've had them for a long time. I want to say it was like 28-ish. I can't remember. It's like, I think it was like the better part of 30 years or so is how long they've been here. So the practices back then were different than the practices now. Well, I'm sure. So I'm assuming that when they were purchased, like that safety stuff wasn't an issue because they didn't look at mm -hmm. it that way. That's all I can but no one uses pull behind sprayers for roadsides because you cause too much drift because you're standing in a truck bed in the air rather than being lower to the ground so we and and at last it was last year's her was or a weed commissioners conference Harbin county got called out for that because they found a picture online of i think it was blake spraying that way from the truck and so we got shamed at the conference for doing that so and i was like well we're not doing that anymore so that was pretty embarrassing. But. I think you told me about that, yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Does anyone else? Um, do other, so, um, um, IRB and Department of Labor Report, do you have separate meetings for other departments' monthly reports? Taylor comes in weekly. Is his um, meeting outside the regular one? No. Um, is there, we have it I'm here just, most of the time. I'm just curious as to why this department is separate from others. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just curious. As There's to a lot of times Megan in her two-person department is out working, so coming in every week is not practical, and she requested that this would be the time to meet. Okay. I have no other question. Okay. Make a motion to adjourn. Sure. Make so a moved. motion. Oh. Second. Okay. Discussion? Anything else? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Say the Pledge of Allegiance with me. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This time I'll ask for approval of the agenda. Make a motion to approve today's agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 At this time, uh, I'll go ahead and open up for public comments. If you'll step forward, um, you can talk about anything on, not on today's agenda. Did you guys speak? Absolutely. Um, my name is Mary Jaspers. And can you come up to here just so we can see and hear you? Thank you. <coughs> and Ivan and I manage the mobile home park. Uh, we have a trailer out there that's been abandoned oh, since about November of last year and um, by a Janet Miller. And uh, the property taxes have not been paid for about five years. And uh, we brought you a letter in December asking if you would help us with bringing it up to par again uh, and having the 
interest on the property tax written off, but we never heard back. Um, and now Ivan and I have decided we will take it over, we will fix it up, and we will bring it up to snuff and get it rented out. It's a decent, it's a 14 by 70. It has adequate plumbing, adequate electrical. It's certainly worth putting the money into, but we needed some help on the taxes. Probably to cost us at least 4000 to get it up to a point where we can rent it out. But I never received a reply from this letter that um, dated in December. So that's what I'm asking. Okay. Um, I know Michelle did catch me out in the hall and explain to me that, you know, that um, this was your request and that nothing was done previously. Um, of course, we can't do anything today because it is just under public comment. Um, so um, we would, we'll take the information. But she had mentioned, I think the property taxes, the taxes alone were like 500 and it was over $500, yeah. between five and 600. And then the interest that you're asking to be written off or whatever is 800 plus I dollars. Think it's about, about oh, I'm sorry, I didn't I, I see you come in. I yeah. Okay. Um, about five hundred eighty-one dollars, um, approximately. The interest is. Oh, all right. On the back um, penalties. Was that as of that's that as was it was like back in, in January? Oh, in August. Yeah. Okay. And then the taxes are five hundred, or um, well, it'd be a little are bit they more because there's another half payment, too, but around six hundred dollars okay. was the tax. Part. Okay. 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 Um, so I would say should we put this on for next week? That sounds good. Yep. We can go ahead and take it under consideration on next week's agenda. That'd be great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I can get you some updated figures and something to okay, add good. to. All right. All right. Thank you. Perfect. The county is holding a tax sale certificate on it. Okay. Um, and what they're requesting is to see if they. Um, could have that interest compromise, so then they would pay the taxes back, and then it would get back on the tax roll. Mm -hmm. How does that go for ownership of the trailer itself? Yeah. And there need to be a quick claim it. deed. Yeah, real yeah. quick claim. They would get a title. They have a title certificate that they the owner <coughs> is willing to sign over oh, to. Oh, all right. Them okay. 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 All right. All right. Thank you. You mm -hmm. bet. Thank you. Other public <coughs> comment this morning? Okay. Hearing none, I'm going to go ahead and ask for approval of the September 12th, 13th, and 14th meeting minutes as presented. Move to approve for the 12th, 13th, and 14th minutes. I'll second it. Okay. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Next item I have is approval for claims for payment dated. September 19th, 2018. I'll make a motion to approve the September 19th, 2018 claims for payment. I will second. Okay, I have a motion to second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Next, I have utility permits, secondary roads reports. Uh, no utility permits. Uh, we closed the highway south of Garden City for our culvert replacement. So, getting complaints from down that way. Just a couple weeks. Shouldn't be too bad. Okay. Railroad crossing in Iowa Falls complete. Uh, no, not just a, I don't know. Okay, yeah. it is done. It, it, it did stretch it, over it, one extra. It rides yeah. a whole lot smoother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. It was done by Friday. So it was the week. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, the next item I have is an approve, or uh, uh, application to approve an addendum to the Iowa Department of, Con of Transportation Agreement number 2018-C-054. Taylor, you want to just update on Yep, so we amendment. approved this back in oh, October, November. So this is an addendum. So this is for paving Highway 175 from the T intersection with 65 all the way to Highway 14. And east of Eldora was going to be concrete. Now it's going to be asphalt as well. So it's an all asphalt project. And this is pretty much saying that they're not going to where they pave out 75 feet or so mm -hmm. on the intersections. They said they wouldn't do it for the <coughs> first one past Pine Lake, 
we have a sign that says VV Avenue, but it is it's all a private drive. We the county doesn't have any jurisdiction. Is that the one there. that goes back in by the church camp, the Brethren Church camp? Yes. Okay. Yep. Like no, the, no, it's not that one. No. It'd be before that, yeah, that's a W. So it's before we even at the top of the hill. This is where the uh, lumber yard oh. used to be. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Real, okay. Yep. So that's, so that's an actual drive. road. It's not a road. No. It's private drive. We have a sign there, though, that it is not a road. Okay. So the DOT said they wouldn't pave it unless yeah. they paved for the whole thing. Okay. So that's pretty much what we're approving. So you co our cost goes down a little bit, but that's about it. I'll make a motion to approve the addendum to the Iowa Department of Transportation Agreement number 2018-C-054. I'll second it. Okay, I have a motion to second discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Next item we have is an annual urban renewal report for our fiscal year 17-18. <laughs> Jessica, can you just explain what this is? So we have to report annually the amount of outstanding debt that we have on any urban renewal or TIF projects. And this is just county held TIF or urban renewal projects, not any of the cities. So there's only three on there. Um, basically every year I lower the amount of debt since we aren't adding to them. And then I complete the report, print it out, give it to you. Once you've approved it, then I'm able to file it with the state. So there's Carbotech on there, Pine Lake Corn Processors, and Garden Wind Farm. And they're sort of deceiving because it's outstanding debt as of June 30th of 2018. And we've had payments since then, <coughs> and some were final payments. And so while it looks like we still have some of those projects, um, at least one of them is paid in full, and the second one will be paid in the fiscal year in which we are, so. Is, is Carbotech the one that's <coughs> paid off? Okay, that's what I figured. Yep. Okay. And they're accessible online to the public. Once they're approved and pushed out there, then okay. it's basically a tool to notify the public of the amount of outstanding debt regarding urban renewal projects in your areas. Okay. Um, I will make a or make the motion to approve the annual urban renewal report for fiscal year 2017-2018. I'll second. I have a motion and second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Next, I have is a resolution. Uh, it's a proposal to relinquish roadway easement and buy real property. Um, Wes, do you want to come on up and describe that? And so just to give a brief explanation of that, uh, we've been working with uh, the Hardin City River Access uh, for going on three years, I believe now. Um, we are abandoning the south side of the road and giving some property back to the owner as what the agreement states and we are purchasing some property from her on the north side of the gravel road to redevelop a river access there for the public to use so uh, like i said this has been going on for several years now and i think we finally are to the point where we're taking action and, and making this happen so um, basically we have to go through these formalities to get that in place and this is all uh, done in conjunction with the County Conservation yes. Board, correct? Yes, so the Conservation Board and the Board of Supervisors. Okay. All right. Any questions for Wes while he's here? Okay. Thank you, Wes. I appreciate okay. it. I will make a motion to set the public hearing um, on the resolution for October 31st at 10.02. Okay. Do you want to hear? Yes, here in the conference room. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Oh, yeah. Sorry, Nancy. Aye. 
Aye. Aye. Okay. Next time I have is the approval of the tax levy rates, the tax payable for 1819. I'll move to approve the tax levies, tax payable 2018-19. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? What are they? These are just the... <coughs> I mean, I know what they are. What are the rates? Um, uh, there was nothing online. Yeah, it's on there. Is it? And I didn't put it on the screen because, honestly, I couldn't make it legible. It's, it's a big yeah. enough document that... We can get... Like, here, you can have this one. Yeah, it's... The whole table I must have looked at it on that, so I couldn't oh, put it okay, on the screen. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, it's on the agenda. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All in favor of approving, say aye. 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 Next, I have is the uh, uh, Iowa River Trail Commission 2018 Federal Rec Trail Grant application. Chris, yep. you, you can have the floor. Come on down. All right. <laughs> yeah. Again, my name is Chris Weeding. I'm the current chair of the Iowa River Trail Harding Commission in Harding County. I'm here this morning to uh, request uh, and uh, with approval from the board for a uh, 2018 Federal Rec Trail applica application. Uh, this is a separate application than the, the recent work that we had uh, just completed with Snyder and the contracting with our 2016 Federal Rec Trail. And, uh, uh, typically, we're not in the uh, you know, position of applying for two uh, of the same type of applications from either Federal Rec Trail or Iowa State Rec Trail. Um, but in 2018, Federal Rec, Rec Trail did allocate an additional $2 million towards shovel-ready paving projects. And we feel we're a very good candidate for that. Uh, the reason for that is because of our 2016 Rec Trail uh, application, which is set to uh, complete all of the bridges and culvert work uh, from um, the current, what we call Phase 1A, which is the project we just uh, uh, had a ribbon cutting on this year near Steamboat Rock, all the way up to the South Fork Bridge in Gifford. Um, so we don't have the hurdles um, of paving uh, like bridges and culverts that would be in the way to uh, throw some throw a wrench into that. So this uh, rec trail application uh, is for an additional 2.5 miles of paving. Uh, and what this would do is continue our paving, a 10 foot wide concrete pavement and a five foot wide shoulder, extended shoulder, um, from our current ending uh, near Steamboat Rock, the Outer River, all the way to 215th Street the outside of Eldora. 215th Street is the uh, road that would turns into uh, Washington Avenue uh, out, out that goes by the Farm Museum and all that. So. Um, and from there, the, the trail work that would be needed to bring us into Eldora is um, a mile or less. Um, so this would be, uh, with acceptance of this grant, you know, potential, uh, uh, by 2020, we, we'd make some really good progress. Of our, our phase 1A goal is connecting this trail from Steamboat Rock to Eldora, which creates our approximate 13-mile loop through the uh, uh, state, tra uh, state Park uh, Pine Lake. So, um, it is a grant for uh, $425,000. Um, we are required to match that, uh, the 20% minimum, um, and, and, and that would be, and we are putting a, a match number of $225,000, and the question is always, well, where are we going to get the match? Um, uh, with a fed if we were approved for this uh, uh, grant uh, next year in 2019, we would be submitting an Iowa State Rec Trails grant uh, for at least a minimum of $125,000. And then we would take on local uh, fundraising and local um, funding at a $75,000 level. So uh, we have the funding in place uh, without additional fundraising um, at this point to cover that. Um, however, our fundraising <coughs> efforts will not stop, and we're going to. This would be another big project, um, and with the excitement that we've uh, get, gained from our, our phase one A being done, uh, we would feel very confident going into next year in 2020, uh, making up that making up that need. So, any questions on? Does it prohibit any 
any? No, the only thing, it, there's no prohibits. Uh, it based uh, only, I guess, the, just like before, the only thing, we, we are set to have to maintain or, you know, have this trail in effect for 20 years from application. Right. So uh, that's, yep, uh, we're not prohibiting anything at this point other than what we've, the prohibits that we put on as a, as a board right. to users. So. Nope, you're doing a great job. Thanks. Any other questions for Chris? All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Hey, gal. <laughs> <laughs> I will make a motion to approve the Iowa River Trail Harden Commission 2018 Federal Rec Trail Grant application. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Next, I have uh, consider the change of the regular meeting date scheduled for October 3rd. Due to conflicts, I would make a motion to just cancel the meeting date of October 3rd. Okay. I will second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, Jody, other business? Oh, well, just wait. Okay. You're canceling a meeting? Yes. And you can't just move it to a different day, time? You're just going to cancel it. Okay. That's my understanding. Yes, you're right. correct. Oh, and is there a reason why you wouldn't reschedule it for a different day or time? Just curious. Well, at this point in time, I understand there's really nothing set on that day for the agenda anyway mm -hmm. at this point. A lot of times there are things that are set ahead of time, right. but right now there's nothing that's been requested to be put on that agenda anyway, so we just decided to cancel it. Oh, okay. Thanks. Oh. I have some suggestions for agenda, but never mind. Okay. okay go ahead. Yep. Thank you. Jody, uh, last week it was brought to our attention somebody would like to know why the clock does not chime. Can you shine <laughs> some light on the chiming situation? I, uh, I turned it off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's uh, two reasons. One is there's a considerable amount of vibration when that bell <laughs> chimes, mm -hmm. and it is knocking some of the plaster and some of the mortar out of the brick in the clock tower itself. So I just made the determination to turn that part of the clock off so that it does not chime. Okay. The other reason was it's very, very expensive to maintain that. So I will do whatever you guys want. I would suggest if you want to have some kind of a chime to invest in some kind of a different kind of mechanical system that has not to use the bell up there. So I can vouch for that. In the in the um, back room in the auditor's office, when that thing would go off, you yeah. could feel the vibration down there. It's, it's just uh, deteriorating over years. It's just slowly vibrating the, the mortar and the plaster off the wall. So, okay. Thank you. Whatever you guys want to do. I, I just have that part of it turned off. Yep. To be honest, I haven't even noticed that it doesn't. It's been off for a year chime. and a half already, so. I mean, <laughs> I, I hear the noon the whistle. The reason I didn't tell anybody, I thought I'm just going to turn it off and see what <laughs> what happens. I have had one person from the public up until last week approach me about it. One person. Oh, a lot of people. Uh. If you did get something else to chime and not vibrate on that, roughly how much would that cost? I have no idea with that. I haven't even checked into that. I mean, can you check before they make the decision? Well, yes. Sure. Could it maybe be turned on for holidays, at least part of the day? <laughs> for what reason? Make noise. <laughs> Pardon me? Make noise. It does make noise. In memoriam of the holiday. Which holiday? Um, 
you want to go down that one road? I think we'd have more questions no. that way if it were <laughs> off and on, off and on. I think we'd have more questions that way. And and like you said, when it's knocking mortar out of the bricks, that's an expense to have to fix. I mean, looking at the cost end of it. Doesn't the church go off across the street? Like <laughs> oh, and chimes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you are not going to get thunder, Rob. Mm -hmm. I'm and just going to new pull whistle out one. goes. How dare you? Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. I'll check into some yeah. costs. I'll get into some okay. other times. See what it's really going to cost, and I'll report back to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Joni. All right. Any other, Lance? Uh, Pauline had that other question. Oh, and it was asked if there could be. Uh, some educational uh, efforts made to um, explain the TIF system in the county and Auditor Laura said that she has got a PowerPoint and she will get that agended for coming weeks. Hopefully next week. Okay. Is that going to be done like after the meeting then? Um, I was asked if it could be presented in tape because it's your decision, but the reason I was asked if it could be taped is so that it would not be lost in translation from someone who saw the presentation and then tried to explain yeah. it to someone else. And that could probably be taped then and put on our website. Then. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay, yeah. that makes That's sense. Why I was just put it on the website like you did how the tax So <coughs> maybe it doesn't need to be in the meeting. I okay. can just get with Micah sometime yeah, that, and present mm -hmm. it and then record it and we'll just put it out there on the website. Yep. And I don't even have to show for it. Yeah, that'd, that'd be fine. Because I don't know why it would have to be done during a meeting and have everyone sit through that if they're not, I mean, if, if they don't need it. it. No, <laughs> no, not by any means, but. <laughs> by the way, I thought that other PowerPoint is on the website is very good. Do you know what it is? Oh. Um, uh, isn't that the one on how property taxes? Oh, done? yes, I did that. I, I, thought I don't surf good. our website very often to see what's out there anymore. <laughs> oh, it's so, surprising yeah. what's on there. <laughs> yeah, that was a while ago. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> There's no narration, though, is there? You just no. have to click through it. Yeah. Yeah. It okay. kind of does its thing. But it's still a good one. All right. Julie? Um, I just wanted to ask um, our engineer if he put together any report or figures about rock slash gravel, whatever it is you want to call it, maybe you could differentiate between what comes from Gifford and what comes from the Martin Mary, whatever. Do you have a report on where that stuff goes? Yes. Okay, can we, do you have it? Not uh, with me, would you like that? me to bring one next week? Uh, could you get me one today? Yes, I could print off the maps very easily. Do you don't have it on a spreadsheet on how many tons go certain places? It's 150 tons per mile or 300, so it's okay. pretty simple. Um, do you I'll have it on a spreadsheet of actually which roads it goes? No, it'd just be on a map. Okay, sure. Okay. I'd like to see that. Sure. Okay. All right. At this time, uh, we'll recess briefly, and at 10.30, we will uh, reconvene and meet with Megan regarding a monthly IRVM report. So we are recessed. Convene, and Megan had requested, and we discussed with Megan, uh, updating us on what's going on in the IRVM program. So take it away, Megan. So I'll kind of go It'll be like a meld of August and September. Okay. Um, so I did have the seasonals up until the third week of August. Um, Nate left just before the 4th of July, so that first week. Um, so it was just the three of us. We did, mm -hmm. there was a bridge project that was done. So we laid the erosion map for that um, bridge project and then we seeded it um, before the hydro seeder basically got condemned. Um, we did, we planted um, about four and a half acres worth of seed. 
some of that was redone where we had seeded it and then like a week later we had all the downpours and then it just washed everything away because there was so much rain. So some of that was reseeding. Uh, we sprayed all of the county yards um, per request from some of the secondary road staff. So we did that and then shortly after we had three weeks of rain so then it was kind of the roadside stuff was kind of put on the side. We didn't get our sprayer back until the end of July and then um, when it was at sprayer specialties they never winterized it so when we started it up each part they replaced broke individually so <laughs> we didn't really get out until kind of very late July August and then I do have the map of where we spray weeds if you guys would like to see it um, we, we basically got a quarter of the county with some hard surface roads and then the sprayer head um, it didn't go up and down anymore it only did a swath across so we hand gunned everything so it did take a lot longer to get that done because when you're out there actually walking the ditch it takes longer than just driving on the swath um, we did brush spraying um, we didn't actually what I'd like to do is a township um, each time but this time we had so many complaints for brush that we just sprayed the brush complaints and then I had emailed you guys and we were having issues with the handgun. It then exploded and covered one of the employees with herbicide and it was going to cost too much to fix so that just kind of got kaput. Um, that and then the two pull behind sprayers, the straw thrower that we haven't used since 1990, that I took to the DOT auction. So that's going to be up for bid. I think they said it was the 20th of October is when it goes up. And then I believe that money goes back to the general fund, if I remember correctly. Yes. Um, they did say two or three of the pieces of equipment that we took down might bring in 10000 or more, so the you know, money from the county. Uh, what did they do? What did they do with the old hydro cedar? The old hydro cedar? Uh, it's still there. They said usually like a landscaper would be, or are you talking the pole behind, right? The old one, yeah. Yeah. So they said typically a landscaper would take that one, but there is, and you buy it as is from the DOT, there is about $4,000 worth of work that needs to be done to it for it to be functional. So whoever buys it, it's theirs. Um, that is part of an LRTF grant. So I talked to the <coughs> who's in charge of that, and he I sent him all the paperwork I had on it. They put in 80%. So when we get the itemized deduction, the county has to pay back the LRTF 80% of what it's sold for. And then the same thing with the straw thrower. So whatever it sells for, they get 80% and we keep the rest. The other stuff that's there was the counties. So it's just, they're not really, we don't practice that type of thing in the roadside anymore with the pole lines. Because now you need to be harnessed in and all of that. We don't have any. We, we don't have any attachments for the truck, so those are going down there. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I went to the roadside conference Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of last week. There was a professor there from U, uh, University of Iowa who does research on how much sediment is coming off of fields and ending up in the roadside and how much is actual dirt that's from the roadside. So I contacted with him and he's gonna do some research plots in Hardin County. Probably won't be till their next year go around, but I'll keep you guys posted on that information. And then Is there a cost to that or no, do they just, nope, it's just, just basically okay. it's us giving them access to use our like use our roadsides for their studies. And I think he said they're maybe here for like a month because they'll set up tubes and whatever and then they leave it and then they just come back and check. So it's not like they're not, you know, really digging anything. How did they decide where to do this? Uh, okay. They, I don't know. <laughs> Just kind of randomly. They, they, he said that this would be a good county to do it because they're trying to do central. So he was all for it. Um, so I emailed him about it on Monday. So we'll see what he comes back with. And okay. if you guys want to meet him, you can. His talk was actually really interesting. And so okay. if you want to meet with him, I can try and arrange that. Please email me and let me know. There, with part of the DOT, um, I talked to Wes about this. Because this county has an IRBM department, the 
the Truax drills that we get for native seed mixes. The DOT will give IRVM one for free, so it's like we pay $100, but then they give us a $100 grant, so it cancels out. And I did talk to Wes. I know he, he leases the drills out for work um, with people that are plant natives. The NRCS is promoting buffer strips, so Wes and I, I'm gonna get this other cedar, and then Wes and I are gonna maybe work together and do like a, this is how you use these drills, and then see, lease them out to people, so we're gonna bring money into the county. Uh, Luke and I did a contract spray for Pine Lake, so we, the, when you go around the little S curve by the mm -hmm. lower Pine Lake, we sprayed all the brush on that lower section and then one of the sections behind. And basically, they're gonna pay for the herbicide, so we paid for it, they'll reimburse us. So we're making $100.92 from them, so that'll be money into the county. And that was my wage, Luke's wage, and then fuel and equipment use. So we just did our, our hourly, we were there for two hours. Um, so it was 30.90 on Luke's wage and $40 <coughs> and then $30 for pulling equipment. So d who pays that then? The DNR? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, no one over there is certified to spray herbicide and because we have the commercial or commercial license for okay. herbicide, they, people can call us if they want. Okay. It kind of goes off of what the lead commissioners do. It's not like we're taking jobs away from people. Um, they contacted me for it and I okay. talked to Judy and talked about idols, so that's all squared okay. away. Okay. The other thing we did was that cell tower, I know that wasn't on the recording, but I think Lance and Renee were there. The cell tower that's by my shop, the guy that lives in one of the houses there complained about how tall the vegetation was. So looking at all the contracts, it's Verizon has the cell tower so they maintain the tower and what's in it, and the county maintains the outside. That's kind of what it looked like. So I mowed that because of the complaints, but I don't actually have like a mower mower. I just have like, it's a rough, you know, you just drive over it a few times and it cuts what it cuts and that's it. But in order to do that, I did have to pay almost $900 to fix the mower partially. So, the, one of the wheel axles was broken on it, and to fix that is actually more than the cost of the mower. <laughs> so I decided not to fix that because I didn't know who actually, because I'm not ground maintenance, so I didn't actually know who was supposed to do that, but I just did it to keep that person from yeah. getting angry. So I don't know if you want me to keep doing that and get the mower fixed, or another one, or where does it go? I don't know what you want me to do with that. That's kind of all in your court. And then today, um, or Brad Block from Diamond Mowers came in yesterday. We got everything set up on the forestry mower head, so that's good to go. There was another piece he didn't see before that was broken on a hydraulic line, so one of our mower heads works, the other doesn't. So the one for brush is attached, and then when we went to go test it, it was vibrating, and when we looked at the teeth from when the live brush is cut, it actually wears on the equipment, so most of the teeth are dulled down, so now I have to buy new teeth. So we basically can't mow or go over any brush that's over like three or four inches in diameter. Otherwise, it's not gonna, it'll just shred and not look right. So those, we're gonna take those off today, or Luke's in the process of taking those off today, and then we're gonna reorder those teeth. So that's kind of update of last month and then up to currently. Today I did order our new spray truck, so that will be built in July, or no, sorry, June. Mixing up my months. It'll be built in January. We will hopefully get it by the end of January, and then it'll go to the trucking equipment, Inc. in Des Moines, and that'll get the flatbed put on it, and then the sprayer is gonna be built, and then the sprayer will be put on it. Um, I do have the grants, they're finally executed, so I can, get the equipment and pay for stuff that we got on the grants. Uh, Cody Wollers just emailed me like an hour ago that he just finished the sprayer, so we need to bring the Kubota to him to have him attach it. 
Um, the Kubota dealership has that one in stock as of last week. So now that I have the grant executed, I'm gonna go down there and we'll get that taken care of. So we're slowly getting these spray equipment in. Um, that's, and that's kind of where we're at right now. And then I, is there anything else? You, and then there was, I had a couple people call about confusion with the budget amendment, so I guess I just want to address that really quick. So for the FY18, for the leftover was like 124000 mm -hmm. but I don't think you guys are taking into account there were bills that were not yet paid off of that, and so the tractor was on there. Um, there over, it was 70900 for the tractor, the bills. Um, that were paid off of it were $2,252.06. And then there were items that weren't on there, like the seed room that was supposed to be built. It didn't get done till this year. So that on that amount, the lumber hasn't come off the concrete. So there's still stuff I'm being billed for for the seed room that should be coming off of the 124. And then the new amendment was for, which obviously that can be altered. That was for another spray truck, so we can send two spray trucks out instead of one. And I do have the amounts here. And then um, the quick fill station, secondary roads has been busy, so every time I try and see when they can help me get that put together, they're always too busy, so I'm gonna have to contract that out. So that's part of the amendment as well. Um, and then I was gonna add fuel costs and then another seasonal employee. So, or sorry, money to the seasonal employee budget because we went from ten dollars to eleven. So I have to adjust for that. But can you give? Like, oh, can I'm you give us a hydro cedar truck? Can you I give us a copy of this in writing? I, well, I have all the stuff written down. Yeah. Okay. Can you just so get that? Put it on. You know, type I it up and send it. I was going to get to it at the meeting on the 29th. Okay. Or have it in before yeah. that anyway. Yeah. Yeah. If because there's a couple others too that we get in writing because I don't. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and I have all the, what, what exactly do you want writing? All of it. Yeah. All, yeah, and just break it down by fiscal year of what yeah, didn't well, I get. Have, so I'm using these now from the carryover bills. So okay. You pull those yeah, if you just remember. afterwards, if you want to get copies yeah. of them made, that'd be great. Yeah, and then the only one I don't have um, an invoice for per se would be the hydro cedar truck. Um, I emailed Daryl today to make sure I had everything into him. But he's probably busy too. Because I didn't know if he said if it fell under like the I forget what the classification name was, then Vanderhags would have to give us the truck that we need. But I don't know how long that's gonna take. So the vendor that I'm going through said a used truck would be between seventy and eighty thousand. So that I put in there because I didn't know what was going to happen. Right. So that's kind of in the mix and then the last thing that I wanted to talk about was while we've been doing brush removal I've had multiple people say they don't want the wood chips chipped into them because we've been chipping um, I've had multiple people complain about us just leaving stuff so the chipper drives behind the truck and we just chip into the roadside well then I had people complain that we were leaving the chips in the, in the roadside so that kind of goes back to do we want to maybe invest in a cheap dump truck because that the um, chipper can hook to it, and we can throw the chips into the dump truck, leave it piled somewhere, and people can pick it up. I don't. Why don't they like them in the ditch? What's what's wrong with chips? I think it's per well. So it's like when you send it yeah. through a wood chipper, it basically like you like mulch. Yeah. It look like mulch. They say that it looks like an eyesore, and I've had multiple Would people they like stop while we've been chipping, and say that. So I'm just like. It's better than leaving it whole in the exactly. Side, so, but and it will disintegrate faster. Well, it disintegrates faster in wood chip form, not yeah. That's what I mean. Right. But yeah, I don't know. I just I think it's a preference. Is, so. is there something that you so I don't okay. I don't know what you want to do with that or. Or a dump truck. <laughs> or That's it, Mark Spence and more. It's going to take another employee to haul the chips away. But you're already pulling the chipper, mm -hmm. so just a different vehicle pulls the chipper. So basically, someone would drive the dump truck and then our work truck with all the equipment in it. And right. Then, I don't know. It's up to you guys, really, what you want to do. Oh, no. 
I think we ought to address, go back and address the policy that we have and right. discuss all this at that time. Right. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Th I do think there are means. I was at the DOT auction in Ames and, and automatic dump trucks went for a fairly reasonable price. So, I mean, if it's going, if that's yeah, the Yeah, but then where are we going to dump them? Well, well, what I was thinking is we have all the, so this, <laughs> so what I was thinking is on the east side of my shop, <coughs> there's an area that, I don't know if it at one point was rocked over and then it just, over the years, just washed away, but I could always spray that out and then pay Taylor or whatever to put rock there and we can leave it there or we can pave, I don't, whatever. Yeah. I think leave it by the shop or. I believe we need to reevaluate the policy and just make it clear that we're either going to chip or we're not going to chip and that's the policy and well I personally since getting injured from where we cut and left stuff and then having to go spray it and then I messed up my knee I personally would not like to leave fresh in the roadside no. right and it's a pain in the butt to clean it I chipping might look bad for a short amount of time but it's going to be a lot shorter than if you leave it whole um it's gonna you're gonna see it for part of it or for a season on the other hand but if it could be hauled away to a pile let the public know it they could come and get it and use it for mulch and that's kind of what people have been saying to me is instead of it being there looking like an eyesore they'd rather the public use it or I don't know if the, do the schools have wood chips on playgrounds? We could always. I, okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I just don't know. I, yeah. would, I would look at that in a lot of different ways. What kind of trees are you chipping? What kind of toxins do they put off for flower beds or things like that? I know there's thorn trees out there, so I'd eliminate a school right away. We don't, well, the locust trees, those ones usually even the spines on them, once it goes through that chipper, they're, they're pretty much emulsified. But I'm just, I'm throwing it out there to you yeah. guys because I've had people complain about leaving it and I've had people complain about chipping. So. You can't win, so. Yeah. No. I had a couple questions. You spoke about uh, working with Attorney Meyer. Um, so are we, is he, what, what is he pursuing in the chassis issue? Okay. So just really briefly, so the hydro let me know. Sphere, because it sits separately on the unit, I, when I sent the mounting instructions, it had like, okay, the wheel, the back wheel axle has to be this many pounds. Front has to be this many pounds. So they obviously, it's on a truck that is not, the weight is not correct because it's five pounds or 50, 5,000 pounds over the legal limit on the back axle. So they know the weight when it's full. So it was basically if they didn't do the math correctly or they didn't follow it, right. then they have to give us a truck that would suit what we Because in my discussions with you and then briefly with Attorney Meyer, it, they misrepresented the chassis. Right, because they said it, it would work. Right, and we have documentation that that would work. They acknowledge, and so this wasn't a matter of, you know, ignorance or malicious intent mm -hmm. on the county's part this is a fact that we were sold something that was misrepresented yes. and now it's not uh, safely able to be operated correct right. okay next item I had was is there anything we are doing to hold sprayer specialties negligent for not taking care of the equipment we entrusted them to fix mm -hmm. and deep I mean it's obviously deviated from typical practice of winterizing something that has water in it so so basically all they did was the parts that instead of having us pay for repair and labor they because I drove it down there two times then the third time I was like no you like you guys are coming here you're gonna talk to the county attorney they sent someone up and they actually re replaced everything and then they didn't charge us anything so okay that was so that has been way. remedied yeah that was like okay. their way of apologizing for not okay that's all I had thank you Megan do you have anything else uh, I think unless you guys have other questions about what we, we did like with those pull behind sprayers do they have a cage around them no no cage 
So you would have to put the safety harness on. How, you say it can't be put on or it's expensive to be well, to put so on? So the way that the, those sprayers are is you stand in the bed of a truck and you hold a hose and you spray as someone drives. They don't have the part on the back where they ride on the back? No. So and I, don't, I don't know if they were, well, and I think the counties had those for... We've had them for a long time. Honestly, it was like... I can't remember. It's like I think it was like the better part of thirty years or so is how long they've been here. So the practices back then were different than the practices now. Oh, I'm sure. So I'm assuming that when they were purchased, like that safety stuff wasn't an issue because they didn't look at mm -hmm. it that way. That's all I can. But no one uses pull behind sprayers for roadsides because you cause too much drift. Because you're standing in a truck bed in the air rather than being lower to the ground. So we, and, and at last, it was last year's Herb, or a Weed Commissioner's Conference, Hardin County got called out for that because they found a picture online of, I think it was Blake, spraying that way from the truck. And so we got shamed at the conference for doing that. So, and I was like, well, we're not doing that anymore. So that was pretty embarrassing. But. I think you told me about that, yes. Okay. Thank you. Taylor comes in weekly. Is his um, meeting outside the regular one? No. Um, is there we have a, it I'm here just, most of the time. I'm just curious as to why this department is separate from others. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just curious. As There's to a lot of times Megan in her two-person department is out working, so coming in every week is not practical, and she requested that this would be the time to meet. Okay. I have no other question. Okay. Make a motion to adjourn. Sure. Make so a motion. Oh. Second. Okay. Discussion? Anything else? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 aye.